What's up guys? Finally getting around here to doing this uh, maintenance that I've been talking about. We've got a race coming up. We're going to go to Showtime Dragway. Um, so I wanted to do this maintenance and stuff. I've been talking about it for the last week and a half. Really haven't had time to get it done. We're kind of fitting it in here real quick. Um, this here is, isn't my oil filter that was on my bike. This is a spare that I have sitting in a box. I'd already um, pulled the oil filter out, pulled it apart. Kind of forgot to film all that because I was kind of rushing around there with it. So I have a spare here that I had taken apart just to show you what goes on here. And uh, this is manufactured by KMP. It's a cleanable, reusable filter. This spring here sits down in the bottom, keeps pressure on up into it. Just kind of sits like that. That locks in. It just turns like that and then that just goes right on the bike on the side um so part of getting along with the maintenance deal here is um full plugs out of it and i checked the compression showed a video before how you check compression on it um compression at that time we checked it was like 260 uh it's right where right in where it's at right now um so that's good one other thing i check here is check plugs Make sure there's nothing abnormal about the plug, like it's not smashed down, the gap's still good. There's no oil burning on it, no no excessive oil, no um, extra carbon deposits or anything. Check both of them, just to make sure. Now I'll put new, new plugs when I get to the track, I'll put a fresh set into it. But as I said, the compression check came out great, um, so there's no, no issues that way. The plugs came out good. Um, I didn't get into filming and doing all the clutch stuff that's in there. Uh, but I have some pictures of that were taken along the way of uh, measuring. You pull the clutch pack out of it, measure the, the, the clutch pack in it, because you're kind of grinding on the clutch a little harder when you're running the no bar stuff than you do when you're running a bar. So you want to make sure that you, your, um, like your clutch stack height is consistent all the time. Otherwise, you're going to end up being inconsistent with it and usually you want to shoot around like a 1.27 thickness of, of a clutch pack um, and you can achieve that by changing the steels and the fibers around in there um, different packs have different um, thickness fibers some worn a little more than others so I toss them around to find out which ones are which um, so I'd done that already I did that prior um, pull pulled all that apart and checked to make sure like the pressure plate, there's nothing burnt on the back side of the pressure plate. Um, like I said, you always want to make sure your stack height stays consistent because that's going to make your consistent clutch releases all the time. When that starts getting inconsistent, that's when your bike can really go be thrown off in inconsistency. One big thing too is the amount of the fluid used to recommend recommended manufacturers fluid for the, um, for the clutch pack that you're using, each manufacturer kind of has their own. Um, Energy One is um, Type F. Um, I think um, Barnett is Type F also. Um, and I, I think the stock ones, obviously, when you use like 2050 oil in it. Um, so. Here, I have the oil drained out now out of the bike. It's been sitting, I went to the movies with my family. Um, so it's been sitting in there. It's got some dirty deposits laying in the bottom. It's separated pretty good and doesn't seem all too bad here now. What I'll do with that is I'll run it through a strainer. I'll strain it just like I did with the oil filter. The oil filter is I pull it off, pull it all apart. I clean, you know, check the screens on the filter. The screens all seem good and everything and then I turn the oil that's inside the filter upside down over a paper towel and let it um, just run itself down and, and filter itself out and I can check if there's any metal particles in it. My filter came out good. Here the oil tank is still sitting open and uh, right here is the oil line that connects right down there to the oil pump. That's where I pull it off. One big key thing that you need to do is Pull the plugs out of the bottom of the sump of the case. On a Sportster, they have um, Allen-headed plugs in the bottom of the case. That's the sump of the bottom of the engine. 
It's really important to drain that um, and not just assume I run a different size oil tank. I only run a quart of oil in my bike. Um, if you still run a stock oil tank, most of the stock motors are, you know, with the stock oiling system and everything in there runs three quarts. So a lot of people just drain it out and they say, oh, I know I take three quarts. They throw three quarts back in there. Three quarts back in there is no good. Um, it, it's too much. And that's when you end up with a sumping issue. Um, a couple of video, videos ago, I said I had an oiling problem on mine because I did that. I'm not thinking to drain the oil out of it. Well, I didn't drain it out of it. I thought it was low, not thinking of what was left in the sump down there. Topped it all off and it was too much. Pushed it back out of the cap. And then it's all over, you know, the track. So one big thing also I want to check on this go around of things is the push rod adjustment, which is right down here, adjustable push rods. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to want to set the motor up that the cam is on the base circle of the camshaft. And that's when you want to check... Um, the push rods and since I, you run solids uh, i run solids in mine now you can run hydraulics hydrosolids um the solids that are running mine are zero, basically zero lash you just you want them very tight that they just barely spin in your fingers as you turn them. so i do each one individually make sure it's on the base circle of the camshaft and then spin it through on each each one of my fingers and make sure it's tight and that's very very critical um like if your motor has any kind of tapping going on I mean, that can be your push rod adjustment, that can be your rocker arm adjustment, or your rocker arm bushings could be going bad, it could be your lifter, you know, going bad, or it could be a lifter pumping down if you got hydraulics. I turn a lot of RPM, so it is on a solid lifter. Um, these are sifting solids that are in here. You can also take the stock ones and you can make them solids if you want to. Um, so those are just a few things that I check. Uh, if you really want to get particular about it, you can pull these lifter blocks off here and you can lift the lifters pull these pins out here and you can lift the lifters right up and out with like a magnet or something check the rollers check the bearings in them um all that kind of stuff um one thing you can do i, I haven't done it yet i need to i got a i've got rocker box leaks oils oil leaks on the rocker boxes that i need to address but they haven't come in yet i've ordered them these are ultima um two-piece rocker boxes that i put on here so waiting for them to come. Um, but another big thing is, is like I said, check your rocker arm bushings in there because it's only a brass bushing and they wear out quite frequently. Um, so those are just kind of a few things that I check uh, in between rounds of racing, you know, every so often. Mid-season, I'll pull it completely down. I'll pull the cam chest off it. I'll check the lobes in the camshaft. I'll pull the lifters out of it, do the lifters, check all the push rods, check the balls. These have been... These balls have been replaced on these push rods because um, they got hammered out of them um, last season. So um, check your rocker arm bushings in there. Check your rollers if you're running roller rockers in there. Check those. Those are some pretty big maintenance items that can cause you huge, huge failures. Um, you know, as, as your season goes, they're just kind of quick, quick little checks. And, and one big thing here is document. You got to document everything. I mean, I got stuff. This is a second or third notebook that I've gone through. But like this here has all, you know, clearances and measurements and, you know, piston to valve clearance and piston to pocket clearance and, you know, what my ring gaps are. From when I put a, build them and I put them together, that's how I start out with. And then as I go through the season, everywhere I go, I mean, it's just data, data, data. So it is everything that you um can record as far as weather um you know cloudy sunny temperature um grains of water in the air your sea level that you're at you know for your tire pressure you run in the front tire pressure you're running in, in the back you know your launch rpm um all that stuff is all recordable data and it's good for future use any measurements that you're able to take you know clutch measurements i always write everything down every time i take a, a compression um check on it write it down you do a leak down test on it write it down um and this way when you take it apart and you go and you put it back together those are all measurable tolerances you can measure and it kind of gives you an idea of if something is wrong or not um if something's not measuring out the way it was before and there was no big changes well then obviously you know you got something going on there so um, kind of just a quick video, maintenance video, kind of just showing the bike here, not really putting the camera on me, talking in the background. Um, 
you know, that's kind of uh, this particular clutch in here. I run the Type F fluid in it. That's what's recommended. There's a Barnett clutch in this thing right now. I burned up my other one. Um, so, <clears throat> um, trying to think of what else we can, that I go over and, and check when I'm doing it. Make sure all my drains are good and make sure my oil tank is clean. Um, fuel tank, you know, that still has, when it sits, I, I put that, um, I fog it down with, uh, just with that, you know, top end lubricant I put in the tank and I run it through the valve because the fuel can, this fuel valve gets dried out and the seals leak and it'll start leaking on top. So that oil really helps extend the life of that. Um, hmm, I think, and then, you know, fogging it down too, um, every time I have the bike out and bring it back home, um, I pull the plugs out of it, spray WD-40 down the cylinders, spray WD-40 through the carburetor, and turn it over while I'm spraying in, um, so it fo fogs it, with a fog it all down, it's, it's just taking that oil in there and kind of coating everything so that it just protects it for the long run, because that fuel is very caustic, it can knock seats out of it, it can burn seats, things, things of that nature, so just kind of quick little Kind of like a little tech video there. Um, hopefully that helps somebody or somebody's got some questions they can ask away and we can get some other answers there and how we do what we do and what we do when we do. So, all right, guys, I'll catch you later on and uh, we'll get back to you when we get to the track. Later. All right, guys, just want to go over one thing that, um, like I said, when you're measuring what you take out of your bike, uh, what you drain out, what you drain out of some and all that and keep a good measurement of it. You know, this is, uh, turn it that way. That's how much oil comes out of the sump of my bike and the oil bag of the bike. So, or the oil tank. So, you know, my bike don't run on a lot. These guys, these guys that run, you know, three, three full quarts, three and a half quarts in your bikes, it's well, for a race bike. I mean, if you're going to be on the road all the time, um, Maybe you need a little more in reserve, but for these race bikes that are only going a quarter mile at a time, you're running entirely too much oil, and it's too much oil in the bottom end around the crankshaft. Um, you're just killing yourself. You're robbing yourself of horsepower. Also, when you're running on the street, you know, Harley and all them recommend 2050. These race bikes don't. I mean, their Harleys are way over oiled to begin with. They're not a high-pressure system. They are kind of like a volume system. I mean, they got a roller bearings in them, so you just have to coat them. They don't have to have a lot of pressure. Um and you're not running long high temperatures these bikes are running a quarter mile at a time so the 2050 oil is isn't needed in them it's too thick i mean you're robbing yourself of power there too too much oil in there too thick of oil in there um so this is what i run in mine sorry about that schaefer's racing oil i run a 1030 in there some guys have run even like pro stock guys that have seen run like AMS oils, like zero weights and five weights and stuff in there. So, you know, a lot of oil theories when it comes to these bikes running on the road is totally different than when it comes to running on the racetrack. Um, th these are my opinions of it. Um, there has been numbers that have done on a, on a dyno when the, the guys have dynoed their bikes and, and check different things like that. Um, some of this stuff has been verified on, on a dyno with real-time numbers. These, my numbers, or my opinion, comes from ET, mile an hour, and things like that. This bike, I've been at it for, with this thing, for like five years now to get it to where, where it is. It started out as a 1200, went up to an 88, then back to a 1250, then an 88 again, then back to a 1250. So everything I'm telling you and everything that I that I do on my bike, I'm not saying it's gospel and everybody has to do it, but this is what has worked for me. A um, few other guys I've spoken to run the same oil. They run thinner oil. Some of them run a little bit thicker oil. Um, and you can continue running your 2050. I'm just telling you from what I have seen differences. It's it's not a huge change. It's not like you're going to change oil and it's going to go two tenths faster. But it's all the little things that are in between. How you evacuate the oil out of the, out of the cases. How you vent the cases. You know, that's a big thing. Push rod adjustment like we just said I'm doing on this, this bike here. That's a big thing. It's all the little things that add, uh, add up at the end that you chase for the big goal. So, you know, it might only be worth a hundredth here, hundredth there. But a couple of them, next thing you know, you got a tenth and you got a tenth of your next guy. So, 
you know, this is for all max effort, for all out max effort for heads up racing. I think it's going to work for everybody and I'm not going to say it's 100% rightest thing in the world, but this is what's worked for me. Try it out. Maybe it works for you. I hope it does. I hope it helps somebody out. Um, but we'll see you when we get to the track and we'll get some more video up going on then at the track with some live action.